Hey everyone, and welcome back to my playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS mod, done in a completionist style. So, we've just rescued Bentha from certain death from Zordral. Unfortunately, we cannot loot, loot Zordral. And I seem to remember that he... Oh, actually, his loot... <laughs> his look, loot went into this, um, like, bookcase. So, that's pretty good. We have another throwing knife. Yay, for Kira and I. But anyway... Her shortage of uh, throwing daggers is soon going to end. Because in this episode, I am here. It is done. we are going to visit a certain area. Which I think we have to visit from the Nashville mines, I think, if we go to the east here. Certainly. Anyway, so if when we're already here, let, let's just Your do some, some stuff. We're going to do um, the, this warehouse here with some war dogs, and Edwin is heading west just to not waste time, because there's a certain secret stash in the very corner of the map, and here's a healing potion in this building. As your it is done. There it is. Yes. All right. Indeed. I do not. My actions are yours. So here's a secret stash in this tree stump. There's a that's a wand of frost, which is a really nice wand in Baldur's Gate One. Certainly. Now there's a few events here. We're not going to go to the mines yet. We basically have to go to the mine area here to unlock the area I want to go to. But we are very soon going to actually go to the Nashco mines. Right, here's a guard, an Amnion soldier. You there, stop. So he's just going to warn us that it's not safe here. We can ask him for more in information. He sends us off to Emerson, which is the owner or the chief of the mine. Yeah, and he tells us also about the artist Prism, for whom there's a bounty, because he stole these two emeralds. Oh, there's, there's some guys to kill. Speak and be gone. Yes, oh, oh. You've a task. You're certain. Try to keep up. What such menial tasks? Tell my action. As you wish. Yes, such me. What fine? Yes, I am here. I'm not, of course, engaging them in melee because they can paralyze and hit, and that would just waste our time. Oh, two angel skin rings, and a web scroll, actually, which is really nice because we only had one of those. We could teach Edwin that spell, but we're not going to have Edwin uh, long enough with us. Uh, which is a shame. And so there are kobolds in the area. Our guys are becoming fatigued. Oh yeah, this is the area. This is the one I wanted to unlock. It is done. But, um, of course we have some more stuff to do here, in this one, still. Just going to quick save and quick load for the combat Sorry. music to fix itself. Alright, now there's going to be a, a guy actually running from the kobolds. Somewhere oh, you are. No, not in here. I am. It is done. Here he is. Galtog. You gotta help me, they're after me. They'll be here soon. So he tells us about the kobolds, dozen, dozens of them. They captured me and stripped me down. The dirty imps tortured me for no other reason other than to hear me scream, but I got away. Oh, no, Your it's concern. too late. They're already here. And it's not a big deal. Be direct. Be direct. Yes, and I am here. 
Then we have a sleep scroll and a grease scroll. Your right, so that's done. that, and all we need to do uh, for now in this area is to just go and uh, talk to Prism, because Prism, the artist, is in um, very close to the west here. I, am here. I don't think I can like unlock the area south of here, because we pretty much already have Your everything unlocked that I want. I don't think this will uncover anything that we haven't had already uncovered. Yeah, this would uncover this area, I think. Indeed. All right, anyway, let's go west and meet Prism. It's going to be something that we're going to quickly do here. And then once we get back, once we actually want to go into the mines themselves, we're not going to have any business to conclude um, in this area. Because Prism is the last yes. point of interest, pretty much the, the last thing that this map can offer to us. Aside from the mines themselves, of course. And he is here. So we've heard about Prism, like I said before, from Oblak. There's a bounty, apparently, on Prism. Because he stole these two emeralds. And uh, also, the other thing we know about Prism is that he is a famous artist. Indeed. Beauteous creature! You are my masterpiece! Yeah, so he, t he tells us about these stolen emeralds, because nothing else would, like, capture the beauty of this uh, face that he's sculpting. But there's Grey Wolf who wants to get him. And he asked if, if we were Grey Wolf's party, I guess. So we can protect him, Prism, because he wants to just finish his, his work. So she, she tells us, uh, he tells us about this woman that, that he met in uh, Everesca. And she was so beautiful that he just had to sculpt her face here and make his None cross Grey Wolf and live. Uh, make his uh, life's work, I guess, the sculpture of her face. I have come for you, Prism. Here's Grey Wolf. And he's just not yet. My work is nearly done. Please, I implore you. Your sentiment is, uh, sentiment is wasted on me, fool. You are but gold in my purse. Do you make your situation worse by hiring help to protect you? Yeah, so he's not very friendly. He's a bounty hunter that really wants his reward. So we have to kill him. Uh, there's actually a pretty funny dialogue if yes. we charm him. I'll see if I if I manage to, to charm him because he has some pretty funny thing to say. All right, he was charmed. Let's let's stop. Oh no! Please talk to him. So yeah, he says, I'm Grey Wolf, a bounty hunter who tracks down those who'd spurn the laws of the Sword Coast. Been known to track for sport occasionally. Maybe I'll let you live, since you're such a likable person. Strange. Normally I don't like people. <laughs> Alright, let's finish him off now. Where are you going, dude? I think because I charmed him, and now I hit... Whoa! Whoa, no way! He just left. Oh yeah. Because I talked to him, and he just leaves after that. That's why. I hope I have a save. Oh no. This episode is a disaster. And I don't have a save from the last episode. Certainly. Normally, I always, I always make a save at the end of uh, the episode, but the last one I just forgot. Oh, this is... This is a disaster. I apologize for for this that we have to replay this uh, gal talk encounter. Oh man. Who you are? No, not I. I certainly. This is disaster. I really want to kill Grey Wolf, and you, you'll see why. He has a very notable weapon. Your concern. The worthless lives end here. Again, as directed. For now. Yes, I am here. It is Dang. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, there's a winter wolf. I'm gonna get some 500 gold for his pelt. Yes, 
It is done. So maybe this was good after all. And of course the thousand experience. But oh my god, that was just <laughs> Whatever. I I'm sorry about that. Now we have to replay this bit. See, I just wanted to show... <laughs> I should have saved before uh, talking to Prism, and all we would have to do is just replay the encounter with Grey Wolf. Nate is good as done. Vita wrecked. It shall be even bloodier than you hoped. Your can certainly... Anyway, let's rectify that mistake. Don't make that you mistake again. Creature. You are my masterpiece. Now we can show a different dialogue option with Grey Wolf, I guess. None cross Grey Wolf and live. Who we are is unimportant. What is important is that we are armed to the teeth and we mean to stop you from hurting him. <laughs> All right, yes. so now let's just kill him. Certainly. He has a potion of power, which what is actually a pretty good potion. Now, are we gonna have Edwin for much longer? Let's just use this I spell. I don't need it. Grey Wolf can be pretty dangerous, and you should be going with him, really. Yeah, because of this weapon. As you can see, he can deal some pretty good physical damage, and he has called damage on it. But Dorn crits him for 38, and given earlier for 20, so he just explodes. <laughs> Gets chunked. Anyway, Grey Wolf is very important, because... We should rest now. I need sleep. He has this longsword plus two, Varscona, which is... Again, a plus two enchanted longsword with cold damage on it. So it's uh, a very good weapon, one of the best weapons in the whole game. Soon. My work will be done. So, uh, in an earlier conversation, I think Prism mentions that he, like, chugged a lot of, like, potions of haste and stuff like that. Or applied a lot of oils of speed to, to be able to finish his work. And I think he just exhausted himself to the point he was so obsessed about this sculpture that he exhausted himself to the point of dying, basically. And uh, he says the name of this woman whose beauty just, you know, enraptured him and or enchanted him so much. And he mentions Elysim, which is someone that we're going to meet in the saga. Let's not say anything more. So, NPC project here. And we can actually have these two emeralds. Which is something that shouldn't be possible. There are some mods that uh, change this a little bit. If you protect him and let him um, finish his work, then the emeralds kind of like stay in the sculpture, which they are meant to stay there, I guess. And so you can't get the bounty. Or you do it kind of the evil way, I guess, and, and claim the bounty. Well, you don't let him finish the work and, and all that. But actually, the funny thing is that the bounty for the emeralds is actually less gold than you get by just selling the emeralds to any vendor, <laughs> to any merchant. Certainly. All right, now we've traveled quite a bit here, but there's, you know, I'm going to go with all this uh, fatigue because in this area there's pretty much no uh, difficult fights. There's usually just uh, some gibberlings or basic skeletons. What? You are so my serve the flaming fist. So there's a flaming fist guy. It is done. And so apparently there's been a deserter from the flaming fist who this guy is looking for. And there's a bounty of 50 gold for his capture. All right then, perhaps we'll meet again. Actually, helps us in this fight. Yes, I am here. The undead rarely rise up of their own accord. This business reeks of Krill. Step carefully. She lurks nearby. I have dreamt of little else these past months. Ever since I was granted these new powers. The desire to drive my blade into the neck of each and every betrayer has driven me forward. I made a deal and agreed to certain conditions. I will speak no more on this matter. Yeah, so you can find out more about this later, but it's really no spoiler because that's just the thing about Blackguards, is that they choose a demon 
or demonic or fiendish, I guess would be more appropriate, the fiendish patron who like grants them those uh, those powers. So we can learn more about like Dorne's uh, agreement, I guess, more in Baldur's Gate 1 and, and Baldur's Gate 2 actually there's a whole quest chain with all these things involved. Anyway, uh, yeah, so basically the only like fight that's I think not even that tough because I don't think it's um, actually improved by SCS. I'm not sure about that. We'll, <clears throat> we'll see. Is the fight with uh, that necromancer Krill because she is in this area. And there's also a very important hidden stash in that er in this area. And there's also that deserter from the Flaming Fist, and his name is Samuel, and we're going to meet him in a second. So here's the hidden stash, as you can see, and it has a ring of fire resistance and a star sapphire worth a thousand gold. So that's pretty nice. And this ring is pretty easy to identify, but apparently not easy enough. Anyway, it gives us 40% uh, of fire resistance. York. Indeed. And that's pretty much it. Now, Krill, I think she's around here. There, there's nothing else here to explore. I think some dire wolves for some experience, I guess I can I can agree to killing some of them. But Shira needs to like heal herself. Because of that fatigue we're taking some more damage than we should. Alright, so let's just teleport to the beginning of this map. And now we have some business going east from here. These skeletons were basically added by the Enhanced Edition, I guess, because of the, you know, Dorn's conversation about Krill being a necromancer and these skeletons being there because of her. So here's Hafiz, and it sounds a little bit suspicious of what he what he says here. I must talk with you. All right, sure. Uh, let me introduce myself. He's an astrologer, scientist, and a mage. Please tell me your name. So like, it's kind of weird, but if you're honest with him, he's actually a good aligned guy. Sinashira, yes, that's the name I remember. I've seen your face in my dreams. The dreams of you are always ones of blood and death, and there is another man who watches, an evil man. They always end with your death or mine. It is so strange that I should meet you, the focus of these dreams. You must be very special. Tell me about yourself, perhaps I can help you. So this is kind of a little suspicious, although, you know, he, he is honest with about his dreams. If you're evil aligned, you actually, or you have a low reputation, I should say. Um, or maybe evil aligned, I don't remember exactly now, but you can fight with him. He's going to attack you. But yeah, if you're honest and... and pick this conversation option... He says, I'm so... Uh, I'm sorry to bring back such painful memories. I wish to help you, and in doing so, end these dreams that plague me. Here, take this. When you do battle against the eight who serve your father's killer, read this scroll and it will protect you from their wrath. Goodbye now. Perhaps we shall meet again. So he actually gives us some good information, and this is actually changed by SCS, because normally uh, there would be six who serve your father's killer, but SCS actually adds two people to that encounter, and they actually change that to the eight. Because uh, there's going to be an encounter with them. And what he gives us is an actual protection from magic scroll, which is a very, very good scroll, and you can just receive it just like that by being honest with him and being a, like a good aligned character or a high reputation character. I think it's about alignment this time, not reputation. There's kind of like a gibberling cave north of here. There's nothing really special about it, just some bloody... Um, just a bloody place, I guess, that I could show while we're exploring. Actually down there. Oh, and here's Krill. I am here, certainly. Your concern? I thought you alone saw past my half-orc blood, Krill. 
Now I see you are just like the others. Perhaps Senjak was too handsome for you to ignore, but I've taken care of that. It's like everyone was like cheating on everyone in that group, it seems. Someone had to take a fall to divert suspicion from the rest of us. And Simeon chose you. Besides, you obviously escaped. There's no need for revenge. It's beneath you, Dorn. Don't be so petty. That's not a voice of a necromancer. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, th this Simeon that they keep mentioning, he was the leader of the group, apparently, who, you know, made the decision, the final call. Petty. You left me to die in Luskin. There will be no forgiveness. Stand and die, Krill. Yeah, like that. There will be no forgiveness. Once again, you fail to realize what's happening around you, Dorn. Rise up, my children. Rise up and feast upon the living. So as you can see, these uh, men here unconscious, I guess. Those are the, the men that she seduced. So she has a mirror image only. What is it now? Speak and be gone. So let's use uh, ranged weapons on her. Yes, oh, omnipotent. Oh, here is like stuck back then. Yes, right, let's approach. So Edwin did four damage to her, but apparently that didn't interrupt her slow spell. Now slow is a pretty nasty debuff. I am here. I will listen. But I guess these skeletons just die with her. You know, out of the content in Baldur's Gate, I'm the least familiar with the enhanced edition content because I don't really play it too often. I can see you suffer, Krill. I can see your soul writhe in the abyss. Of all my betrayers, you are the one whose pain pleases me most. Perhaps not literally. Not with my eyes, but I do have channels of communication. Enough of this. Let us search the body. Yeah, so he speaks about, you know, channels of communication to the abyss. Alright, so here's the amulet I wanted. Which no one will be able to identify for now. But that's an amulet that improves your save versus spell by two. So here's her robe, some healing potions, and... He's interested in this uh, note. So this is a note. Uh, I'm going to scroll slowly so we can pause and read. Uh, so it concerns Dorn. Um, it's basically a note from, or a letter from Simeon to Krill about uh, the fact that Dorn, you know, escaped his cell in Luskan and they know about that. And basically he was inviting Krill to join his group so they can stand a better chance against Dorn, who's... Uh, you know, coming closer to finding them out, I guess. That note, let me read it. At last, Simeon, the king, bastard himself. Quickly, let us make haste. And he not mentioned in that letter that they are stationed, uh, like, near Baldur's Gate. So this basically is the conclusion to his questline. Simeon is the last one that he wants to kill, but he's only available after opening the bridge to Baldur's Gate City, because he's on the other side of that bridge. It matters not. I will escape any trap they lay for me. I will overcome any obstacle they place in my path. I know better than to trust the word of those I have slain already. But I sense it is true that he gave the order. Simeon must die. Hmm. Have you lost your taste for revenge? I would not have expected you to turn down a challenge. Until now, you have proven to be a capable leader. Your concern yep. it is done. So anyway, we have that done. And when it comes to that conclusion to the quest. Uh, fortunately, only two people from our three people from our party are slowed. Slowed is a really powerful debuff. It's a level three uh, AOE spell, and it slows you down. And um, oh. 
So here are the gibberlings. So let just Dorn prove himself. I it is done. Don't bother me. Okay. And Gibberling died. It is done. I will this one for now. Yeah, indeed. So here are the bloody Gibberling lands. <laughs> All right, slow has passed. Can be, get back to our regu regular uh, murdering program, <laughs> slaughtering program, or slaughtering schedule. So yeah, some I was heard their like lair, I guess. Anyway, the last thing to do in this area before we have to wrap up this episode, is to find that deserter Flaming Fist guy. I am here. Plenty of Gibberlings slowing us down. Indeed. What do you want? Yes, it is done. Now, oh, anyway, I was Major also saying that um, I might do that conclusion to his quest once we unlock Baldur's Gate city uh, because the loot from that simian fight is actually pretty decent especially in scs especially in scs because they give you a bastard sword there that casts uh, dispel uh, invisibility which is a, um, a pretty good spell in scs and uh, you can get it for free from a weapon basically so I might recruit Dorn just for a moment later on, but uh, this is pretty much all we needed him for, so I'm going to get rid of him very I soon. Heat is done. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should do it now, because he's going to eat uh, at our experience. So yeah, I guess we're going to get rid of him now. You can keep your hamlet helmet. Alright, because... yeah, yeah, exactly, that's everything I wanted him for. So thank you, Dorn. We might see you again later on if I want to kill Simeon and get his loot. You wish me to leave? Yeah, get out of here. You shouldn't make a habit of committing mistakes like this. They add up. If you change your mind, I shall be at the friendly army and yeah, so friendly Armin. Oh, I also forgot to mention that once we recruited him, because he's an evil black guard, uh, our reputation, similarly to when we recruited Viconia, um, was decreased by two, but then when he leaves, it, it goes back up. Anyway, let's talk with this lady here, Helena. So, um, yeah, my fr she's, she says that, that her friend over there is badly hurt, and he might die if he doesn't get assistance soon. Yeah, so this is Samuel, and she wants us to bring Samuel to the friendly arm in so that Galana Mirrorshade at the Temple of Wisdom there can help him. And Samuel is that deserter from the Flaming Fist, so the evil option, I guess, is to go back to that friendly arm guy and, um, you know, bring Samuel over to, to them, or you can accept this kind of quest and take him, take him to the friendly arm in. Yeah, and she says, please take him to the temple right away. I don't know how much longer he will live. And this is actually gives me an opportunity to talk about um, a little thing here, because it's a difference. There's a difference how... There's a difference how that kind of quest is handled in Baldur's Gate 1, and uh, there's a very similar thing in Baldur's Gate 2. I don't think there's any maps to uncover here, maybe the northern map here. But in Baldur's Gate 2, there's also uh, a quest like that where you have a um, very heavily wounded man that you can keep in your inventory, pretty much. It's uh, Renfeld that you rescue from kind of an ambush. And uh, you have to bring him to a certain place. Uh, not to be confused with Renfield, I guess, from Dracula. Uh, anyway, so Renfeld there in Baldur's Gate 2, you can basically hold him in your inventory and hold off on doing that quest pretty much forever. And, and I've done that before, <laughs> where I just kept carrying him for like weeks of in-game time, like before uh, Spellhold. 
Uh, but anyway, Samuel here, I think he has like three days of in-game time to live. So you pretty much cannot really mess around. You can't dilly-dally around. Uh, I've learned it the hard way years ago, where I just, you know, have him, had him in my inventory and, you know, was going around different areas doing some, some quests. Finally, I went over to the Friendly Arm Inn, which already the travel from this area takes 40 hours. So you have to go, like, almost immediately to the Friendly Arm Inn to deliver him. Because if you take too long, uh, actually, you know, Galana is going to say that he died or he was at too severe of a condition and she wasn't able to save him anymore. So that's a bad ending to this whole quest and you get a worse uh, reward. But if we go straight there and just uh, deal with this ambush. It is done. Because that was uh, basically, I wanted to do, to have that area done with Dorn to do his quest here, and also to take Samuel because I knew we would have to go back all the way north to the Friendly Arm Inn, and then we're going to go to Beragost and hand in Bjornin's quest, and also finally purchase some of those throwing knives. And I'm going to purchase a lot of them, believe you me. Anyway, this has been another half an hour. Like time really flies when you play Baldur's Gate, doesn't it? Anyway, so uh, this is going to be it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one, and uh, thank you for watching.